Hello. No, no audio. Hello, hello. That's good. That's a little bit better. How about yourself? How are you doing? How's your, uh, how's that wine cellar doing? <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> uh, I'll change it in a minute to Trump Tower. You can ask me again. Uh, we deal with you? Yeah, they're doing well. Just trying to, trying to get different documents and stuff ready to share and whatever. All right. Uh, does it, uh, can anybody host us or are you hosting? So I think, let's see, I, 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 I'll put it this way. I, I'm one of the hosts. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, so there's a group that Cecilia could get in with a little bit later about this like eShip Champions group, which is a kind of a set of folks who've been participating in these calls that are basically, um, we've been recruited to help organize some of the calls and some of the other work, so. All right. Is that in what you're fact, doing? <laughs> speak, of, speak of Cecilia and Christine, and Christine is still connecting to audio. Awesome sauce. I'm trying to pull up the, uh, the agenda. The agenda. Okay. I will leave it to Hi, you. Eric. I like the green pastures. Yes. You know, it's it's a tiny bit techy. It's not totally off putting. <laughs> I mean, CJ is the first time I saw it. I was like, wow, he's pretty legit. I was like thinking that he was like actually in his like a restaurant or her, or his actual cellar, and then now I obviously realize it is something else. <laughs> you actually realize that it's a photo of his basement and he's not working in his basement? It's like, wow. Um, I just put it into the chat, but um, no, I think it's great. Uh, CJ, I kudos to you and all your hard work on that wiki. That was, um, that was really impressive. Thank I you. hate to say it but it wasn't <laughs> you know starting the wiki is not the hard work contributing to it is the hard work so i hope people do it no i think it's it's fabulous hi richard hello, how was hello. your trip it was long and uh <laughs> driving and almost death but uh it was good <laughs> had you not done all those calls in the middle of all the driving but you know <laughs> all of them me. yes that was fun yes. But um, but we'll uh, Eric. Do you have a popcorn question? As everyone kind of starts to join, I don't really have a popcorn question yet. I'm still uh, monkeying okay. around with this document, so I'm I'm happy for for a for a different <clears throat> pop up question. I can I can work on that. Um, I uh, glad to see everybody on the call. We'll. Drop in the link in just another minute um, again um, as I'm fixing it so that we um, we have a clean slate to work off of and we have. Oh, are you working on that too? Oh, are you going to do it? I'm, I'm going to let go and let you do it then. Um, how about. Uh, way is fine, but that sounds good. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so this is, uh, it's wonderful to see all of you. Um, thank you for joining us, and we'll we're we're just um, editing because we're uh, I didn't do my homework and get this agenda ready for um, for everyone just to begin with. But um, but for the popcorn question today, since we're talking about invitations, um, I'm curious to know. So for our popcorn question, oops, we lost Marcus. Um, for our popcorn question, what is what is the most interesting thing you've been invited to? Or what's the most interesting invitation you've received? How's that? Um, we will try to keep it to wow. remember that this call is being recorded and it will live on the <laughs> dashboard in perpetuity. So just with that lens in mind. Um, so or tell us about something fun and interesting that you have been invited to along the way. Okay. Um, so I will put the, the popcorn question in and um, 
knowing that Christine gets a lot of very interesting invitations, I'm going to popcorn and start with Christine. Tell us about something you've been invited to. Oh, man, there's going to be some good stories here. I'll keep it as short as possible. Um, I got I was in Boston. and I got a text from a friend being like, what are you doing this weekend? Did you get my invitation? And I was like, what are you talking about? What invitation? He's like, hold on a second. Forwarding this invitation. It's a very lovely invitation to go to this event in the Hamptons. And I was like, I feel like I'm kind of close, but I'm still kind of far away. Sorry, like appreciate the invitation. Replies back, all you have to do is say yes. So of course, what do we do? We say yes. And then two minutes later, I get an email saying helicopter ride. And so I basically wow. got helicoptered from Boston to the Hamptons to be in the house where Billions is recorded. It's uh, Michael Loeb's house um, for a really incredible small group gathering. And so, um, yeah, keeping it short and sweet, that was probably the, that was the first thing that came to mind when you asked that question, Cecilia. So um, <laughs> I know, yes. Nice. <laughs> I was like, are you really going to start with me, Cecilia? Um, all right, Miss D, I'm going to put you up. <laughs> Tag team you. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Um, well, when I was, um, I lived in Spain for a year when I was 16, but I was traveling alone for the first time in an international flight. And, you know, you're really nervous. But they called my name at the airport, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, what's about to happen? But they just asked that if I would, be okay with just being upgraded to the business class and I was like sure that sounds like a deal so uh, I don't know if that was cool enough but uh, that was a pretty that was a pretty cool one so um let's see Richard what do you want to go next oh man you guys um okay so this call is being recorded so the story I get to tell if this call wasn't being recorded doesn't get told here um so some of you if you were on the happy hour call last time, we talked about the first place we would travel uh, if we were going to travel. And so this is kind of a more context to that story. Uh, met a new friend uh, doing Startup Week in New Zealand a couple weeks ago, and we hopped on a, um, I posted something stupid to my Facebook story. It was like a stupid cooking show thing. And she commented something and then we started talking and we hopped on like a video call that ended up being six hours long. And like we, where we ended up was like, she's from Australia and I'm in like upstate New York right now. And we are like, after the world stops burning, uh, we all need to go travel the world. And I was like, I'm going to screw, I'm going to Hawaii and New Zealand and then down to Australia. And we ended up with like a world tour starting like the end of this year for like at least a year. And like, so let's go. If the world wow. isn't burning, but we'll, uh, we'll make it happen. So that's, that's, I was like, put it on my calendar. So she did. And so I think I technically got invited to it, which I said yes to. Popcorn Eric. Oh, gee. Well, boy, it's impossible to follow these other ones uh, in some ways. Let's see. So the thing that I was thinking, um, there was a theater group I was involved with, uh, but before I became involved, one of the things that helped get me involved was they, their belief was that the show begins as soon as you get the invitation. So they had these, these sort of these handwritten invitations with, you know, handmade envelopes that they handed out and you accepted, you didn't know what anything about the show, you, you just knew kind of an address. Um, so not super secret. I think, the, I think you actually got the address later, but uh, as you arrived, you were met uh, at the sort of a front gate and then led into a house and I think there were blindfolds involved. It wasn't exactly whatever that Tom Cruise New York movie was, but it was uh, it was pretty it was pretty cool. They're just a wonderful theater group. So um, so yeah, sometimes I, I think so far it's the idea is you should go with the invitations. I don't think we have heard with uh, from Chelsea yet. Man, I feel really boring with my invitation after listening to all of you. Um, so. My the most interesting invitation that I ever got was uh, my husband, um, one of his college friends, um, 
they got married in Amman, Jordan, and we got invited to the wedding. Um, and that was one part of the world that I had never imagined traveling to. Um, but it was one of the most incredible experiences of my life. Uh, the wedding was amazing and the, uh, the, the, they structured it so that all of the uh, American guests and um, people coming from overseas, they had put together a whole uh, plan for us to follow for travel arrangements. And so we were able to go visit Petra and we did camping in Wadi Rum and then we went to the Dead Sea. And it, it's like, that's one of the most amazing things I've ever done and the most incredible invitation I've ever received. So that's mine. Um, let's see, popcorn, CJ. Okay, uh, well, I had a different one until you said it was being recorded too. So, uh, well, years ago, before I was uh, an entrepreneur or anything else, uh, I put myself through college and even high school doing, of all things, uh, stand up comedy and magic. And this was in New York, Long Island. And uh, turns out that, uh, you know, at 16 years old, I was uh, too young to get into the club, so my father had to bring me in. And the other guy doing stand-up comedy that was too young to get into clubs was Eddie Murphy. And uh, so we, we were on Long Island, so we sort of got to know each other, and he would invite me to see Saturday Night Live when he was on it. And one day he invited me after the show and said, I'm sorry, before the show, uh, during one of the rehearsals and said, you know, wave me on saying, listen, come on, you know, come back with me over to this area. It, it, it was an invitation, but it was more of come with me. I don't want to be alone. And it was because uh, there was Sylvester Stallone there. And oh my gosh, I forget who the other guy was, but it was Sylvester Stallone. This is right when he started to get all pumped up and all that. And he started to criticize, not criticize, but point out all the areas of where we can build up our bodies and how using certain supplements, he can, you know, put veins on our back. I'll never forget that. Anyway, uh, so that was the most unusual invitation I got was to hear Sylvester Stallone and, and I forget one of the other muscle heads that were uh, actors that was there outdo each other about how ripped that they can get and how, the, and how, how long it would take them to get one of us guys ripped as, as them. So there you go. And I'll call on who didn't go yet, Marcus. Yeah, I haven't gone yet. Um, yeah, I, I have <clears throat> terrible invitation stories. So um, <laughs> I guess I'll go with uh, I was invited, kind of, um, kind of employed, kind of invited uh, to do the tech for a South by Southwest panel this past South by Southwest. And then, of course, that South by Southwest West panel was canceled. So, like, that invitation was cool, but then that's of course how I met Celia and got connected into all this. So my cool invitation is not just a cool invitation because of what it was for, but the serendipity that brought me here. So that, that's my invitation. And I'll go with Tiffany, I think. Great, Tiffany. So Tiffany, the popcorn question, and you missed some really great stories, so you'll have to listen to the recording of the, the call is, Tell us about something that you've been invited to since we're talking about invitations. And remember that this call is being recorded. So keep your, and, and I usually don't have to worry about Tiffany, but I just want to preface that. Well, um, thank you, Dia, for putting it in the chat. I've had like 10 seconds to think about this. Um, what have I been invited to? Um, do we have to have accepted the invitation? I get invited like, I don't know, to birthday parties and baby showers and things, but I always have like a conflicting appointment at that time. Tell us about something fun you went to because you were invited. Oh gosh, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I'm going to waste so much time on this. Oh, call. no. No, it's here. The first, the first thing that comes to mind in terms of the most interesting thing you've been invited to. Mm. Oh my gosh, people. The most interesting thing I've been invited to? I don't know. Well, I'll tell you, we invited Tiffany to Denver. Um, yes, that was interesting. That was fun. <laughs> that, was a good, that was a good experience. Yes. Yes. And she's like, why are you inviting me? I remember yeah. that. 
<laughs> see, now you see how it's like a struggle for me to think about it. Tell us why you said yes. Oh gosh. Um, well, it, you know, I love entrepreneurship and I love ecosystem building and it was an opportunity to meet other people in this field and collaborate with them and to learn from them um, and to get a better understanding of the e-ship movement um, and to work on something that was really cool and I feel like is very like specific for this time. I was listening to a podcast earlier like thinking about COVID and how it can be scary but also if you think about like your life right now you know you exist during COVID like out of all the times you could have been born like you exist during this moment so thinking about like how this moment like impacts you and what you can give back to like this time in history um and so I felt like that with Denver like that was an invitation um to an experience that was in that moment um that can't be replicated because it was so special so, and we'll and thank you and we'll make up for it Dia when um, when we get people together when we can so um, so thank you for sharing that Tiffany I also feel like you know I, I had the the pleasure of meeting Tiffany at her first eship summit we sat in the first campfire yeah. together and, yeah. Civic and, Ninja, that was you yes. <laughs> it was uh, it was really interesting and and Tiffany didn't didn't feel like an ecosystem builder, I think she said. And she's like, I don't know what this is, but I really am so glad to be here. So um, so it's all of those things. So I will tell you about my um, invitation because I had all this time to think about it. Thank you everybody for your wonderful stories. Um, so those of you who know me well, or know me at all actually know that I'm this ridiculous Springsteen fan. Um, so, uh, so uh, a couple of years ago, I went to Ireland because I had a couple of weeks before I needed to start a job and I, there was a tour and I had frequent flyer miles. So I went to Ireland and, and one of the things that I got to do was hang out in a pub with Susie Tyrell, who happens to play violin for Bruce Springsteen. Um, I met her years ago when she used to play with, um, G. E. Smith from from um, Saturday Night Live, right around the time De um, Eddie Murphy was on Saturday Night Live, and um, Will Lee, and they were this amazing little band that played in CBGBs. And the fact that I knew who she was before Bruce Springsteen, she was like, "Okay, you can hang out with me." Um, I think so. So she had invited me to connect with her um, her publicist and um and come hang out um in the e street lounge which is like a vip lounge before the show and i i'd had the pleasure of hanging out in the e street lounge before and susie doesn't usually go there um so i got home and and i was i sent a nice email to her per person and and i said i really appreciate the invitation but i'm not um, you know, I'm, I'm good. I'm just going to go to the show because she knew I was going to the Hartford show. And then about a week before Hartford, I get a phone call and, and this voice on the phone says, Hey, Celia. So this is Susie from Dublin. And I'm like, oh my God, Susie Tyrell is calling me. She's like, she's on my phone. And she's like, I just wanted to make sure you got in touch with Holly and she set up your E Street Lounge passes. And I said, look, you know, I'm, I really appreciate the invitation, but honestly, Susie, I've been backstage and there's pretzels and popcorn and you have to buy your own drinks and you don't hang out at the E Street Lounge anyway. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'll look forward to seeing you at the show. And so we chatted a little while longer and towards the end of the conversation, she said, well, you know what? I'm just gonna let Holly um, put aside some working passes for you. And working passes in the in the concert world means you get an all access pass. So she actually invited me to go hang out with her backstage, and um, and we got to and then while we were hanging out before the show, she said we'll come back after the show because you know we're gonna be hanging out for a while. And so I got to hang out 
backstage instead of because I turned down the the VIP lounge passes. Um, I had the benefit, so I and I call Susie on her birthday um, occasionally and just say, "Hey, I'm just thinking about you. Happy birthday! Thanks for making my experience so much better." But She's, she's since um, invited me and my son to go backstage. So JD's had the experience of going backstage at the Springsteen concert too, which is pretty cool, but that's my big invitation. So um, Eric, you wanna prime us for our conversation about invitations. Now that we all know, we should probably just keep saying yes, right? Just say yes. All right, so let's see. So who among us, I think many people were on the call last month with um, Kelly Motz uh, from Wellington Group, but, but maybe not everyone. Was it was, who, who was not part of that call? <clears throat> All right, so one of the things that, so I uh, highly recommend checking out the video. I think it was one of the, one of the better calls I've been part of. <clears throat> Just a lot of great information about uh, Kelly and uh, Wellington have been part of the team that's put together the eShip summits uh, for, from the beginning. So, and, I, and I'm not totally sure of, you know, roles and all that kind of stuff behind the scenes, but uh, as I understand it, it sort of feels like they're thought partners and how that, how the event is shaped and put together. Um, and for those of us who've been to eShip, I think it's, it's, it's a very different event um, and it's different in a lot of different ways. We can't get into all of that now. We got into a good part of it last, last month. But one of the things that she asked us to do was to see if we as a group might be able to help with something that's on the list for the next eShip Summit, whenever that may be. <laughs> um, so one of the topics that's come up is the idea that some cities or some regions, communities uh, think um, sort of proactively about how, who needs to go to eShip in order to make the most of the event. Oftentimes there'll be a mayor that's going, maybe some other people from, from key staff with city or uh, community government. And then, you know, more, and that's, that's the mayor's conference piece, which happens alongside the, the main eShip uh, summit. And then there's a handful of people sometimes from a community that'll, that'll attend the, the eShip summit. Sometimes that happens in, a, as I say, sort of a proactive way. And, and I feels like those, the groups that do that intentionally seem to get more effect out of it because they can they can choose the conversations they want to need to be part of, but also there's there's a working relationship among them oftentimes before they go and usually after they get back. So I know I've been part of some of some of that activity with uh, with some groups from New Mexico. I think we mentioned uh, Philly. Philly does this really really well. There's a lot of lot of different places around the country that do do that well. Well, the folks at the Coffin Foundation have recognized that this is something that is valuable. Um, and one of the things that's been discussed, and I, is I'd say it's still maybe an idea, is the that they would encourage people to attend the next eShip event as a delegation. Well, what is a delegation? How does it come together um, so that we have those folks in, in the room that represent different facets of their community that can work together ideally before and after the event and but that also can kind of carry this message not just carry the message but frankly live the ideals of isha principles and the goals that we're all discussing they can they can live and bring that back to the community so that community has a much better chance of acting as an ecosystem acting effectively as an ecosystem um, and doing you know doing great things i'm just jumping all over the place. But that idea of bringing people together and bringing or encouraging them all to attend together the eShip Summit is something that it's a great idea, but how do we actually get into the implementation of that? So I think that was one of the questions that, that Kelly was asking, can this group, since we're about collaboration, and also since this, has, this is in some ways similar to the kind of group that would probably put together a regional eShip event, maybe we can look at how this, this works. Um, and she went over the six different conversations that are, I, I, I dug out my, my book, <laughs> Peter Block Community. Um, I'm so glad that Cecilia put the link in, uh, in the invitation to this very event. Um, 
she went over six, the six different conversations that take place, but the key one that has its own chapter is the invitation because it all starts um, like, like my little theater experience, like some of the other events that you all mentioned. It all starts with how folks get invited and how those people get brought together. Now, I will confess that I don't have a great plan for how do we invite folks, but I thought this would be a nice group to sort of kick around some ideas about what an invitation looks like, what do we need to consider so that we can, as folks who are participating in, um, in this uh, eShip work, and some of us as eShip champions, so that we can think about, well, how would we invite people from our community? So that's a sort of a general uh, introduction to what we're talking about today. And I've got some notes that I'm still writing and I'll include in the chat, but I want to just check with everybody and see, does, does, that make, does that make enough sense to sort of kick off our conversation here today? I would have a follow on question to that. Um, you know, if we're talking about invitations, um, I feel like the first thing you should consider when you're talking about the invitation is uh, who are you inviting? Um, because the subject is obviously the, uh, I guess, the definitive for like how you go about making that invitation. Do they know about eShip? Do they not know about eShip? Are they, have they partici participated before? Have they not? You know, are they important people, unimportant people? All those types of things, I think, play into what that invitation looks like. Totally. I think yeah, that's, that's great big, framing, big Marcus. <laughs> Yeah, especially knowing that there are a couple of people on the call that are new to um, to the eShip stuff and have been ecosystem builders in their own way, but um, but you know not as familiar with the eShip world. So I'm I'm curious to hear maybe from some of the people who have attended eShip, um, like who let you who invited you and. And what did they say that made you want to go? Because I think that thinking on on the things that drew you to an event like that, maybe, um, so if you were to turn around to Richard and Marcus and say, hey, you know, there's this thing and uh, you want to come and hang out in Kansas City, I don't know. I mean, what did they say to you? That is a great question. <laughs> and I'll just note, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some of the questions that are coming up in chat and in the room, and I'll be putting those in the notes because I think answering these very questions is perfect. So thank you. I can kick it off. Um, I remember I was at another conference called Big Omaha in uh, 2018 and uh, Carlos, who was an eShip champion at that time, we got to talking and he started telling me about eShip and the eShip Summit. So that, that was my first introduction and him being an eShip champion, obviously he had a different perspective of deeper knowledge into some of the things. But for me, uh, I jumped on some of the goal calls before the eShip Summit that I attended. And I think that gave me a lot of um, involvement, context, as well as I felt like I had some skin in the game and um, that helped a lot for me. Uh, one of the things that was very attractive to me was that uh, everybody who spoke about the summit said it was a very collaborative and active and dynamic sort of deal instead of just listening to speakers. So th that was something that resonated well with me as well as when I was proposing it to whoever was going to fund my uh, conference trip. So that, that was my experience. It sounded like um, having some information beforehand was helpful. Yes, yes, definitely. Tiffany, who invited you to Isha? Uh, nobody. Um, but very similar, you know, kind of to what Dia was saying and what you just summarized. Um, it was just through researching, you know, how can my community be collaborative and support entrepreneurs? It sort of led me down this rabbit hole to Kaufman, and there was enough. In information on the Kaufman website where I got like obsessed it was by invite only and so then I had to know like how do you get on that invite list like I want to be on that list and so it took a lot of um, like natural curiosity but if there wasn't enough information to 
explain, you know, the idea of eship, um, and certainly that first very first draft of the playbook, I wouldn't have gone because I, it would have been too vague, and so I do think that that's really important to have enough information um, to explain to people what it is. Yeah, so who 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 else from this group has 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 attended? Or is that is that all of us except for me? I can do I'll do my little quick one, which was that um I think so the city of Albuquerque, uh where I was working at the time, we had some level of a relationship with uh with Kauffman Foundation. And I'd known Andy for, for a little while <laughs> here and there over over several years. So the idea that um I think we were kicking off a kind of a long-term engagement with Kaufman or just about mutual interests, or we, actually we had been do, had doing that for a little while, even before uh, Andy uh, and, and Philip and, and other folks joined the team. So we were already kind of predisposed to participate in this kind of event. Um, but I appreciate it and I think it's special when I mean, to some degree, maybe it's FOMO, maybe it's other things, but it's that idea that you need to be invited to go. I think that does create something of a threshold and something we'll get to a little bit later. And I'm not sure that I, I'll describe it well now, but one of the things that um, in this, uh, the Peter Block approach to building community and having this be part of a conversation is there is an ask that they have for people who are participating in this event. It's not that you're coming to the event and you enjoy yourselves. We, we, we want you to have a good time. There's, there's the potential for asking people to do some work, to really, you know, to develop the field, to bring something back to their communities. So thinking when we, as we answer these various questions, one of the things that I think it would be useful for us to come up to with is what are we asking of participants? so that they know, should I be attending this event? We we're providing knowledge, but also what are we asking them to do as part of our bargain, as part of the, you know, the, the agreement that we have for them participating in this event? Maybe I can chime in a little bit too, or so do you want to chime in? No, go ahead. Um, I think Eric, I really like appreciate that primer. Um, last year was my first eShip Summit, and I think I'm really sensitive to events where people are attendees or participants. I'm really big on language. And so the fact that eShip was really an active, engaging environment, I'm not going to be spoken to. I'm going to be, be speaking with people. And knowing that the environment that Wellington uh, is really great at, I think, is creating the lineup where it's not like just you know, one speaker speaking to many, not one to many, but creating opportunities for many to many to speak to each other. And so I think another thing, and it goes a little bit to Dia's great question too, around like the invite only question. I think in terms of thinking back to your initial question, Eric, around the delegation model, and I have a little bit more insight, Cecilia does as well, in terms of uh, this, and we can share more if and when it's helpful. But I think acknowledging the role that each individual that we're thinking about inviting has, like why they're important, like why their voice is important and um, creating a space where we're actually like seeing and hearing them because that may not always be what happens the day to day in their local ecosystem. And so I think when we think about these delegations, there's a really important opportunity around the curation, which I think goes to Marcus's question around like, who are we by, like inviting? Um, and then Dia's question around like, and then whose invitation coming from? And so um, I think really thinking about the value that each person in a delegation can bring that is complementary and or so disparate that it's an important voice that may not be normally included or heard is also something for us to think about as we think through this invitation. I love that, Christine. Thank you. <clears throat> yes. Go so ahead, who, yeah, um, I know there was a delegation from Philly. Who was, who was part of that delegation? Like, who are those key players that, um, that then, you know, kind of like Eric was talking about, had to come back and do something with it? So, so that story um, actually evolved. It was, it was self-organizing. And Herman, who had been to the eShip Summit before, who teaches at the Community College in Philadelphia, um, was the one who, 
who thought, oh, you know what, the E-Ship Summit is coming around again, and I want to go, and I think that if I invited other people to go with me, that we could do this. So he actually, and there's a story that should be shared soon, if it's not shared yet, on Ecosystem Builder Hub, that um, Beth Zimmer from Erie, Pennsylvania had written, and it's, um, it's actually about how that kind of came about. So, so the interesting thing is, you know, and, and we say this all the time, ecosystem building is a team sport, right? You can't, you, you have to ecosystem build with other people in your ecosystem. And the eShip Summit is always just one point in time. It's a time where we get together, but the ecosystem building happens throughout the year, throughout the, the life of the community. And so um, it's, it's also, a lot of the things that happen around these calls, right? So people, I think there's a, a level of expectation setting also. When you invite somebody to an event like the eShip Summit, or you invite somebody to these calls, you're not coming on this call where we're just going to share content out. I, we ask you questions and, and we don't have all the answers, right? So, so those people who go to the eShip Summit thinking that they're going to hear from a lot of speakers, be able to walk home with a lot of information, and not that they don't, but, but it doesn't just get handed to you. Like you're really figuring it out together, just like we do on these calls. It's like, there's no answer. We're all writing down. And that's why we have people that write down the questions and, and we ask all of you for your input. I think that you'd be disappointed if you thought that you were going to come on a call and, and just be given information, right? Um, but there's something in it that keeps you coming back. So I'm curious about that for CJ and Marcus, Chelsea and Richard. It's like, okay, so we figured out that you're not going to give us a playbook with all the answers. There you go. Go ecosystem build. But, um, but part of this is, hey, so what keeps you coming back? What keeps you engaged? What keeps you curious and wanting to, to think about engaging in this way? So that's an open question for all of you. I think for me, it's a really simple one. Um, I'm really passionate about this space and um, this is where the conversation is happening. So why would I be doing anything else with my time? Uh, well, for me, I've been involved with Calvin Cal um, initiatives for um, 12 years now. And so I get, I hop in and out of different Kaufman uh, discussions. Ecosystems is very important. There's only a couple of uh, groups in the country really thinking about it right now from uh, j just dissecting and trying to think of best practices and even fewer groups who are, who are doing it uh, non-commercially. <laughs> uh, and uh, so, that, that's a motivation. Kaufman has always been the gold standard for anything that they've done. So that interests me. Um, I'm also, you know, I keep on coming back because I'm, frankly, I'm, you know, while I think I'm a smart guy, I'm trying to keep up with this to figure out what has happened in the past year. Uh, and which is one of the reasons I created the wiki because I want to find out where, where we're at, where, uh, where everybody's at with the, the evolution of the thinking so that we can move forward. You know, I see a lot of process. I see a lot of extraordinary discussions and activities. Um, but for myself, I'm trying to just keep up to figure out what, where as a group, there's been some consensus or, um, uh, you know, what, what, the, what the, the state of the, the work is so far. Oh, yeah, I'll do that. I'll share the link. It's in the Slack channel, but I'll share the link here. Richard or Chelsea? I think the reason why I've been coming back, and I'm, I'm very new to this, um, is the, the conversations that have been had over the last couple calls that I've been on um, really helped me to get out of uh, the day-to-day -day and look at things in a bigger, broader way, um, especially of how, 
how are how are how are we all contributing and, and trying to to tackle um, ecosystem building? Um, so that's that's why I come back. I have a box on my face, but we'll leave it for a second. Um, <clears throat> I, for me, it's, it's about the people I get to help, right? It's about the impact I get to make. And for the longest time, I've been doing it on the community level with one program, one accelerated program, or one university, or one whatever. Being able to do it on a larger scale, on a macro level, and helping uplift all the startups and all the small businesses and the people in my community is very important to me. And rising tides lift all ships, right? So being able to do that more effectively, more efficiently for the region and ultimately the country and the world, that's that's really important. I think those are pretty epic reasons to be involved in community, right? Uh, so I'm, I'm curious, Eric, the, the, um, the, the invitation thing was really important to you. Um, it's, it's what really got your attention. Um, and, and you're one of the most inclusive inviters that I know. I, so, so for those of you who don't know, um, Christina and I went to visit Albuquerque last year and, um, and Eric convened a bunch of people in his community and, and he was the only man in the room and, um, and he introduced everybody. And then he sat on the side and really didn't, while he engaged, he didn't feel like he needed to be the front person in the room or the person with the most attention, even though he was the convener, which I think is a very elegant thing to be able to do. And, um, and he was very intentional about the people he convened. And so the intentionality, I think, is really important, and being inclusive are really important. So when I, I want to ask everybody about that. I mean, when you walked into the room, so the first time I went to the eShip Summit, it was 47% women, 29% people of color, representation from about 48 states at the time and 10 countries, right? That was the first eShip Summit. The last eShip Summit, I think we were at like 53% women and over 30% people of color, 36% or something like that. And, and we had, um, I think almost all 50 states and there were people like, um, uh, from Saudi and, and New Zealand and Finland as well. But, um, but what does that say to you about um, the kind of room that you're comfortable in, the kind of people that you invite, the, the things around that? Like, I think we're all going to continue to be intentional, but, but is that important to you? And, and I mean, it seems like a, rhetorical question, but it's really not. So, and I'll, I'll, I'll jump in. First of all, thank you very much for the kind words. <laughs> um, just, I don't know, great people. You want, you want the great people to speak. The, the reason why that's really important to me is I think oftentimes there's, there's, a, there's a structure that exists and the more traditional structure has for very many reasons, some of them some of them not particularly bad, some of them awful, but those, those traditional structures tend to exclude different groups and different people. Um, so, and, and what I think I've seen with through, throughout my work over, the, over years is if you don't include some folks who are not part of that structure at the very beginning, then they almost never get in the room. Or once they get in the room, they don't really have a chance to shape the, the conversation that conversation and all those kinds of things have already been set. So that's why it's become increasingly important to me over the years that we get that kind of thing right. Um, and that's one reason why I like this, this question of how do we pick the folks that are gonna help shape this delegation? That's really, really top of mind for me. I don't have a great answer for it, but I know it's really, really important. I would 100% agree with Eric. Um, that's a conversation that my co-founders and I have had a lot of with diversity, if you don't start out with 
a diverse group, you know, it's not going to get more diverse unless you're very, 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 very intentional. And even then, um, it takes a lot of, a lot more onboarding than starting out with a diverse group. So I think that's, um, I think it's a key piece. Uh, it's interesting to see the progression, Celia, of diversity in um, the, e the e ship summits. Um, it's kind of cool. Kind of cool, so. I was going to chime in just because of uh, the chat D and I are having on the side too. Um, I think complementing that, but there's a, there's something different too. It really in thinking about who to invite. In addition to being inclusive and diverse and all the things that we know are so important, it's also really figuring out how to tee up the invitation that people can actually receive it and show up in a way. Because I think there's something to be said around people being really inviting and welcoming, but if that person isn't in a place to engage or do that work, or they're not ready yet, it's all about timing. How do we also take that into consideration? Just a little bit of an X factor. Um, but I think there's something important to think through there around like how much work has the ecosystem done to cultivate some relationships and trust and even care and interest to even be in a conversation with someone that might have a different perspective. And so I think that's also something interesting, especially in this work where there is a lot in the pot around, you know, politics, religion, a lot of things that we don't necessarily talk about that could be taboo, but it's all part of who we are and part of the ecosystem. And those are all really important factors to also consider. So there's another piece that I think as Dia mentioned how she felt when she was first uh, participating at eShip, it was also her way of showing up in that environment where she was open and like Tiffany too, open and curious and wanting to listen versus just coming with a specific point of view that she was going to like just share and make sure that other people heard, you know? So just, I think, I think something to keep in mind. It's interesting. I do see um, kind of this, you know, obviously the point of the summit is to be people who are actively doing this stuff and are going to take it back to their community and whatnot. So you've got that. You also have the desire to use the summit as a means for driving diversity within the ecosystem building space, right? And so sometimes the individuals that are active in your community don't reflect that diversity, you know? And, and so how do you, um, whether it's through the conversations you have um, in that delegation or whatever not, um, have the, you know, bring that as part of what you're trying to do, even if you don't have it as, as it is. Philly is a greatly diverse place and all the, and, and the players are fairly diverse. And so I think there's a lot of space there, but other places might not have that, um, in the, uh, in the entrepreneurial space at the moment. Tiffany, you've convened people. Um, I, I had the, the pleasure of going up and visiting when you were with, uh, um, with the institution about convening people and, and you saw how they showed up and you saw because they were delegations. So Tiffany had a delegation of small towns in rural Arkansas. And, and what did you observe about the people that came in that delegation? And what would you have liked to have seen? And what did you see that they did well? So we had five different communities come um, and it, it, the intention was for it to be citizen leaders. And so empowering people to make their own positive change in their communities. Um, the, I think the recruiting process was flawed our organization met with um, our, the funding agency. So it was funded by uh, electrical co-op. And so they first sent it to their members, um, which cut off, you know, a lot of regions. But then, you know, we relied heavily on the chambers and their network to send the invitation. And so it was interesting when the purpose of the program is to empower citizen leaders, but then the people who were privy to the information, um, you know, were part, were pay to play types of situations. And then the ones that were there, um, if they either wanted to be there or they were told you're going to go and be a part of this program. 
the people that were the most engaged um, and the most active, interestingly enough, found out about it. Through, they were chamber members that found out about it through a newsletter, but they were not specifically invited to come. And they were the ones who were the most vocal and the most um, swam against the water, sort so to speak. And now that I think it's been over a year, maybe two years since Cecilia was there, the ones who are still making powerful change are those ones who went against the grain. I mean, the ones that were there sort of on their own accord. So they had the, the privilege of being in that network on the front end to have the information. You know, they, they heard about the program, um, but at the same time, it, you know, they were intrinsically motivated to go because um, they were curious and they wanted to make this change and their projects are the only ones that are still um, moving forward. Um, and, and it wasn't without difficulty and challenge, but I think it was, you know, like intrinsic motivation versus extrinsic motivation. So they weren't told to go by their employer or their supervisor. Um, and so thinking about that, you know, with this conversation, when we're talking about invitation, what are we talking, like, are we talking about identifying specific people and giving them an invitation? Or are we talking about having, you know, the verbiage of an invitation, inviting people to, to come who, like Christine says, re receives that information with an open mind? Because it makes me a little nervous, the idea of like, us or whomever is planning, the, if it's a regional e-ship or the big e-ship, like picking and choosing who gets an invitation and who doesn't. And then thinking about, you know, the, del I love that the delegation model and the delegation idea, but like with my experience, it wasn't until I got there already where I realized there was other Arkansas people there. And so if I would have read that, that in order to go, I had to be a part of a delegation, I wouldn't even know where to begin to create one. And so I think that it's important that the, the people, well, I think in general, you know, we're all here because we want to be here. Um, you know, we're intrinsically motivated, but thinking about, like, I don't feel like I have the right to choose who gets an invitation and who doesn't get an invitation. Well, and, and on that point too, not only is it the, you don't want to, you know, you know, who are we to say who can go, but even if you have the option for delegations and then coming by yourself, what does that do to the individual who comes by themselves, you know, who's part of that ecosystem, but, you know, didn't get that invite. Do they feel ostracized? Do they feel like, oh, well, I guess I'm not as important. You know, how, how do you go about that? Or is it an opportunity for that delegation to say, oh, hey, we found more individuals who, who are passionate like we are. And, and I know is that it, maybe it's a toss up. Um, so it's an, another interesting question. So let me, uh, what I'll do is I'll take, because I know the, the, the joy of these meetings is that they don't have enough time to, to answer these questions. But I think we're, we're asking, and I think Tiffany's asked a, a perfect question here. And I think it's probably the most important question that we as a group can deal with. And because I, I recognize, I recognize that that trouble or that difficult position that puts us in. My suggestion is that those of us who are part of this, I invite you to continue this conversation in Slack uh, and we will create an environment to do that. But the, uh, I think one of the things that we were considering in an earlier version for the, the regional leadership was, it wasn't a set of names, it was more like principles or qualities. Here are the kinds of things we're looking for. We're looking for a, group, a delegation that is somewhat representative of, of the people in our, in, our, in our home that have this intrinsic motivation. Those kinds of qualities, and I, I kind of think about the e-ship principles to, to some degree, but if we come up with a set of characteristics that would make people who are members of a good delegation, um, that feels to me like a, a principle-based way of saying, this is who we think a delegation or what we think a delegation looks like. Uh, and then that way we can sort of open that up to the community and communities are gonna decide on their own. But does, does that make sense? 
And I know also, I think Christine or, or Cecilia may have also had some other information about delegations or how that all works that we wanna, we wanna add in here uh, before we break up. I'm happy to share a few thoughts, especially to Tiffany and Marcus's point. I think, like I put in the chat, I just really appreciate and love the thoughtfulness of this group. And I think to Dia's point that she's mentioning, um, I think one of the things that Wellington is thinking through and we're all thinking through is how do we actually connect folks before they even come to eShip? I think, you know, it is not a lack of anyone's interest to hopefully connect in their ecosystem, but they just may not know. And so if Marcus is in Arkansas, Tiffany's in Arkansas, Richard's in Arkansas, the three of you all independently register, then we'll be able to see on a map, these three folks registered, like, and then just being able to orient folks a little bit beforehand. I think in terms of thinking through, I guess I wouldn't necessarily frame it as who to invite and who not to invite. I think one of the things that, uh, and then Cecilia, I'd welcome your input here chiming in too. I think one of the things that we're hoping to do is just provide some guidance as to like what your, if we use a team analogy, like what your roster might look like in terms of some of the folks who might be important to including your delegation and then thinking who might be someone that represents that audience well. And then being able to, if there's a conflict of a few people, ask them. The three of you came to mind. If we only have spot, a space for one, who might have the availability, the interest, the energy, all of those things. And so I think really being honest with the challenges that we're feeling to be able to like just call them out and address them as a group are oftentimes important. That taking into consideration, that's taking into assumption that people already have some kind of relationship with each other to even think about the other in a way that's more important than themselves. Um, but I think just being able to, at the very least, identify who the different folks who are registering are in a certain region or in a certain area, and then being able to create some invitations, because I think the biggest thing that eShip can do is provide a really nice process to hold everything in. Because there's gonna be a lot of things where it's like, I have no interest in going if Cecilia's going, why would I wanna to go to that? You know, and there's going to be maybe pre-existing uh, relationships and intentions. And so I think we're also aware of that. Um, and so hopefully this invitation will be framed in such a way, Tiffany, to your other question, that it's going to invite everyone's higher selves to come together. Because the thing that's most important for all of us is the economic resiliency of our community. If we're really in this together, we're going to come together for that, put aside our ego as much as possible to be able to know that, especially now in this time of uncertainty. And so I think there's a lot of interesting pieces that are coming together at this time for us to really set up the delegations really well, taking into consideration a lot of the thoughtful questions that this group has asked and being able to come to it with, um, yeah, curiosity, openness, like each one of you have already expressed and modeled in your own way of being engaged in eShip. I love that, Christine. Thank you. Um, I think that, that that's the, the challenge and the, the opportunity and, and also to, um, to engage people who you may not have ever engaged with before to give you an added reason to reach out, right? To build that bridge or to at least start. They don't have to come. They don't, um, but the fact that, that you want to be in community and you want to collaborate, I think is also um, something that can come out of extending an invitation. Hey, so there's this thing that, um, that I know about and I think that going together or experiencing it together would be really great for the sake of the community. That puts egos aside um, and, and hopefully that's the bridge, right? So how do you build the bridge and maybe using invitations as the, the bridge building tool is also effective. And it's also an interesting thing to think about the people who are key stakeholders in a community that people don't successfully engage with and you wonder why. Right. And the assumption is they're all out for themselves or it's ego or whatever. And maybe sometimes they just don't get invited. And and that's a, a really interesting thing to think about or the assumption that, oh, well, everybody invites them to everything. Um, and sometimes they don't. So I'm, I'm really interested. I know that we're we're starting to run out of time, but Richard's part of One Million Cups. And have you been to a One Million Cup Summit? I did, I went last year. Okay, so, so I'm curious because, um, because I know that the dynamics of, 
of the, going back to the diversity thing, the dynamics of the people who attended changed when we had different demographics as organizers. And, and the invitation, I mean, the invitation is always there for people to attend a One Million Cups, right? Tiffany and Eric have run One Million Cups. And, and so the fact that it happens isn't the thing that makes them come back and stay or be engaged, right? So, um, so what do you see in, in interpreting that, that open invitation, hey, everybody come, to, to come and be a part of the community? There's, a, there's something that happens to people that, that makes them become part of that, So yeah, I'm, I'm curious, just mindful of time, if you can phrase your question to be a nice checkout question. Oh, I don't know, Christine, you're going to help me with that. How would you phrase that question to be a, a good checkout question? You just say, how would you answer that question as a checkout question? <laughs> meta, Richard, meta. <laughs> we do have two minutes. Go. <laughs> Tiffany's off mute. Yeah, well, I was thinking, you know, our strategy of growing One Million Cups is it was very individualized invitations, but it wasn't invitations like you can come and you can't. You know, right. the invitation was always open for the whole community, um, but we would identify specific people that we felt like that presenter was applicable to, like what they were sharing that the people could connect with on some level. And those people are the ones that ended up coming back repeatedly and maybe bringing a friend with them. Um, and we always made it clear that that invitation for them was, you know, this is open to everyone, but this is why we're reaching out to you individually. Yeah, um, actually it's interesting because we just joined a new church and so we get invited to all these different stuff and whatnot, right? And the thing I recognize, all of those things are totally open. You know, the different small groups we're a part of are totally open, um, but it's the kind of um, specific touch of the organizer who is connected, who knows the different people um, that, you know, brought me, brought us into that, into those groups. Um, not that we wouldn't have initially, but the, the turnaround time was quicker and the stick was, was more sticky. Um, and so I think it's, um, not that it's a open or closed thing as much as a who do you have and who's the person who's inviting that makes the big difference. Right. And I think it's, it's inclusive. It's radical inclusivity is that how they call it. Right. It's like thinking about by uh, thinking about who is missing and who, if added, can add value and make everyone better off. And then specifically seeking out those people, inviting them. The invitation for everyone obviously is there for them to come, but identifying gaps and bringing people together to form your more diverse, more inclusive, more equitable group um, based on who's there now and who is needed. Well, there we go. <laughs> is, is, is that our end note? Or are we, uh, <laughs> I put a little invitation in the chat. So we'd like to continue the conversation about this. Um, Cause I know, I, I think, I'm not sure what our timeline is, but I know that it's not endless. So I think getting to the really, really revving up this conversation, cause I think it's a deep one, I think was, is valuable. I included some other uh, content in the notes. I'll recommend um, Peter Block's book. We'll share some of the, some of the content that we possibly can uh, to the extent that we can in a, um, in a reasonable way. Uh, in addition to that, I'd also recommend folks go and check out the, the talk with uh, Callie from last month. I think that was excellent and it really helps frame these kinds of things. But uh, that's all I've got. I just really appreciate everybody for showing up and, you know, sharing your thoughts and participating in this conversation. This was awesome. Thanks, Eric. And thanks, everyone. Really, really great discussion. Really rich. Thank you. We'll look forward to continuing the conversation. All right. We'll thanks, see you Marcus. Soon. All right. Oh, Have a great start to the week. Beautiful. Love it. Bye, guys. Bye. Yes. <laughs>